الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Brothers and sisters, inshallah ta'ala, in this video we're going to take a benefit with regards to fasting and the month of Sha'ban. Now I know some of you are thinking, what did he say Sha'ban? I, I mean, maybe that was a mistake, he probably meant to say Ramadan. <laughs> no, I meant to say Sha'ban. Sha'ban is another month outside of Ramadan and it's a month in which fasting is also uh, legislated and it's actually encouraged okay so a lot of us think that fasting only happens in the month of Ramadan and some of us unfortunately only even ever pray in Ramadan unfortunately some of us don't even pray in Ramadan we only fast which makes no sense because a person who abandons the prayer has abandoned Islam according to the hadith of the Prophet in Sahih Muslim but anyway that's not our topic of discussion the point here is that I wanted to tell you about another month okay it's called Sha'ban. It's before Ramadan and we are in it right now. In fact, as I'm recording this, this is the 14th of Sha'ban. By the time the video is out tomorrow, it will be the 15th of Sha'ban. Does that make sense? So we're in the month of Sha'ban. So I want to talk to you about fasting in the month of Sha'ban. I know that's new to so many of you. <laughs> if it's new for you, comment below. I'd really like to know if you if you knew that there was fasting in a month called Sha'ban, if Sha'ban even ever existed, if you even knew that. If this is new, I would love to hear it in the comments below. So, um... So what is what is what is the virtue of fasting in this month? Is a hadith by Usama ibn Zayd radiallahu ta'ala anhu which is in Sunan al Nasa'i in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was asked by Usama. He said to him, He said, Ya Rasulullah, Lam Araka Tasumu Shahran mina shuhuri ma tasumu min sha'ban. He said, Oh Messenger of Allah, I do not see you fast any other month the way you fast in Sha'ban. Like you fast in Sha'ban a lot, there's no other month that you do this. Now, of course, the exception here is Ramadan, because Ramadan, the Prophet would fast all month, and everyone would fast every month. So he's not talking about Ramadan. Out of the other eleven months, he's saying you fast this month more than every other month, and he's asking why. So the Prophet he said, "ذلك شهر يغفل الناس عنه بين رجب وبين رمضان." The Prophet said, "The month of Sha'ban is between two great months: the month of Rajab, which is one of the sacred months, and the month of Ramadan." Um, and between these two months, there's Sha'ban, and people don't really, you know, they kind of forsake it. They're a bit heedless of it. And in that time, you know, people might become lackadaisical, tired. They might just focus on Rajab and focus on Ramadan, but they don't really do anything in Sha'ban. So the Prophet ﷺ, he would put in extra effort, he would fast in this month more than any other month, <coughs> so as to not forsake the month, so that he could be one who worships Allah all year long. Does that make sense? And again, this is an important reminder to those who worship Allah only in Ramadan. Remember, Allah Azza wa Jal, uh, is the king of the heavens and the earth and your Lord and deserving of worship all year round, not just in Ramadan. And this is the Prophet ﷺ trying to worship him at a time when even people are neglecting it. And then the Prophet ﷺ went on to say, وَهُوَ شَهْرٌ تُرْفَعُ فِيهِ الْأَعْمَالُ إِلَىٰ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ This is a month, Sha'ban, in which actually the deeds are lifted to the Lord. Of all sentient beings. And then the Prophet said, فَأُحِبُّ أَنْ يُرْفَعَ عَمَلِي وَأَنَا صائم. And I love and I like that, that, that my deeds are presented to my Lord and they're lifted up at a time when I'm fasting. So he wants to be fasting. When his deeds are taken up, that he وسلم, is in a state of fasting at that time. Does that make sense? So this is a, a month in which Fasting is prescribed, it's legislated, it's encouraged But it's not as simple and straightforward as that Because this is an interesting month Because in this month There is fasting that can happen Which could be wajib, which means obligatory That's right, Ramadan is not the only time where you have to fast There could be obligatory fasts on you in the month of Sha'ban So you need to know There could be a recommended fast Which is just a mustahab sunnah one, Which is encouraged That the Prophet used to do and there, could, and there is a fasting in the month of Sha'ban, which is haram, which you are not allowed to do. Does that make sense? And there is a fasting within this month, which is makrul, disliked, depending on if you take the, and you see the hadith to be authentic. So I'm going to mention to you all four types with evidences and examples of each. Does that make sense? So you are able to navigate through the month of Sha'ban in a way that is going to be, uh, you know, uh, fitting, inshallah ta'ala. So let's start with the fast in Sha'ban, which is wajib, which is obligatory, which you must do, which you have to do. Does that make sense? 
This is referring to a person who has got fasts that they have to make up from the previous year. We call this qada, okay, qada. For example, this happens to women a lot. They menstruate and because of their menstrual cycle, they're not able to fast. And some of them, they don't make up the fast throughout the year. Now, if you haven't made up the fast throughout the year, and you're, you know, and, 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 and you have to make it up, you should make it up straight away. But you have to make it up before the next Ramadan. Now, if you don't make it up before the next Ramadan, that's hugely problematic. Does that make sense? You have, you're just adding on to having to make up more the next year. I mean, there are some sisters that have got ten years of fast to make up for. So you want to make sure that you don't do that and you don't displease Allah Azza wa Jal by exceeding the limit that He gave you. He gave you a whole year, a whole eleven months to make up just a few days. So if you have those fasts on you, you have to make them up in Sha'ban now before Ramadan comes. This is called Qada. Does that make sense? Um, also, if you di- if you were traveling and you didn't fast in Ramadan and you have fast to make up, or you were sick and you have fast to make up, or you were pregnant and you had fast to make up, or you were breastfeeding and you have fast to make up, or you know, in those situations, you you must uh, you must do that uh, now. And the evidence for this is a hadith in Al Bukhari in Muslim where Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha she said, كان يكون علي الصوم من رمضان that there used to be fasts that were that were over me that I had to make up from Ramadan. And she said, I didn't have the ability to make up for them throughout the whole year except for in Sha'ban. Uh, why? Because maybe she was traveling and going on expeditions with the Prophet. I mean, you know, when you're traveling, it's hard to fast. So she's saying, I never had the ability to make them up until. Sha'ban, so she would use Sha'ban to make up these fasts because she didn't want to go into Ramadan having not made up the fast from before. So that's the wajib, the obligatory, the fard fast in Sha'ban. The mustahab fast in Sha'ban is just to generally fast as much of Sha'ban as you possibly can, as much of it as you possibly can. The evidence for this is the hadith again of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, again muttafaqun alayhi in al Bukhari and Muslim. So what is it that she said in this hadith? She said, Ma ra'aytuhu fi shaharim akthara minhu siyaman. Fi Sha'ban. She said there was no month in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam fasted more. There is no month in which I saw him fast more than Sha'ban. Of course the exception is Ramadan. Ramadan is the whole month. So she's not talking about that. But apart from Ramadan, there was no month that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam fasted entirely from beginning to end. No, there was none. That's only for Ramadan. So you're not, we're not allowed to do that. We have to follow the Sunnah of the Prophet um, Except for what? Except for the month of Sha'ban, in which he fasted the most out of all the other months, but he never fasted it completely. So now, which is the fasting in the month of Sha'ban, which is haram? So we've done a wajib fast, we've done a mustahab recommended fast, and we now are going to do a fast which is haram. Um, a fast that's haram is a day or two before Ramadan. A day or two before Ramadan. Well, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said لا, تقد... لا تقدم رمضان بصوم يوم أو يومين إلا رجل كان يصوم صوما فليصمه Again, in Al-Bukhari Muslim But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Do not precede Ramadan by one or two days Meaning do not fast a day or two before Ramadan Do not do that, okay? Um, why? Why would we be told not to fast a day or two before Ramadan? The reason being is because You see, some people they think to themselves Okay, we haven't seen the moon, but it might have been out there. So, in case it's out there and we haven't seen it because there's cloud cover or whatever have you, you know what, let's just fast to be on the safe side. Because it could be Ramadan and we don't know. And this is wrong. Because the Prophet wasallam, he told us that Ramadan can only enter between one of two. He said, سُومُ لِرُؤْيَتِهِ Start fasting based on what you see, i.e. the crescent, the hilal. And break your fast, as in come to Eid, based on seeing of the crescent. If it's unclear and you cannot see the moon, in another riwayah, in another narration, the Prophet ﷺ explained what did he mean by فَقْدِرُولَهِ He said, um, he said, فَأَكْمِلُوا Complete 
complete the month of Sha'ban, 30 days. So if on the 29th day you don't see the moon, then let Sha'ban be 30. Don't stop the month on the 29th, does that make sense? So Ramadan can only enter either by the sighting of the moon or by Sha'ban being a full 30 and then you fast the next day because it can't, a month can't be more than 30. Does that make sense? So some people try to fast for Ramadan out of caution but this is caution that's basis it's not required because the prophet told us if you can't see it wait and we're not allowed to add anything into our religion does that make sense we're not allowed to add anything and we're adding something to our religion by adding an extra day to ramadan which may not which which which, which we're not legislated to do so and sheikh ibn uthaymi said something powerful when he explained this hadith he said the same way we're not allowed to delay acts of worship i.e you cannot delay your salah you cannot delay your zakat you cannot delay you're fasting, you can't fast the Ramadan fast in Shawwal or Dhul Hijjah, which are other months. You have to fast in Ramadan, it's the right time. It's the same way you can't delay, you can't do the action too early either. We are as slaves and we are told a particular limit. We have to stay within that limit. Allah told us, start at this time, end at this time. Start your suhoot fasting day at this time and end it at this time. I mean you can't delay our iftar. We can't say, oh, I want to delay iftar two, three hours. We're told. To break our fast at Maghrib time Does that make sense? And we shouldn't start We can't start our fast too early And say oh we're not going to do suhoor That's what the people of the book The Christians and the Jews they did Does that make sense? They will start their fast before that So we don't, we, don't, we, we, we don't add We don't subtract We do exactly what Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi told us to do Now pay attention The prohibition is there لا تقدم رمضان بسوم يوم أو يومين But then there's an exception Someone who can fast a day or two before Ramadan Generally you can't It's haram But there is an exception Except for a person who had a habit of generally fasting For example, they fast the three white nights Or they fast Monday, Thursday Well, white nights won't really apply here because it's in the middle of the month But they fast Monday and Thursday And the, Ramadan, the day before Ramadan is a Monday and a Thursday Or a Thursday, sorry Or a person fasts the fasting of Dawood One day on one day off Or a person has So, so, so he's got an Ada He's got a, a habit of fasting So this person is no issue for him if you fast a day or two before, before Sha'ban, does that make sense? Also, a person who's got qada, he's got fast that he or she has to make up from the previous Ramadan. Or they've got kafara, which is expiation, certain sins that you do, you have to expiate through fasting. So you've got kafara on you, you can now do that at this time. Does that make sense? The reason why you're allowed to do these type of fasts is because you're not fasting here because you're trying to be cautious for Ramadan and adding an extra day to Ramadan. No. You're doing it for some other reason. Can I assume so many? He fasts a fast for whatever, whatever that reason might be. Fell assume then he can fast that. Does that make sense? So to clarify, generally speaking, you can't fast a day or two before Ramadan. But if there's a reason that you fast, which is outside of Ramadan, nothing to do with Ramadan, it's just a normal habit, then you can make that happen, inshallah ta'ala. And the last type of fasting, the fourth one, which is the one that's makru in the month of Sha'ban is based on a hadith of the Prophet alayhi as-salatu was -salam. and this hadith of the Prophet sallam it mentions uh, if you reach the halfway mark of Sha'ban then do not do not fast do not fast does that make sense um, so here this is makro. Uh, for those who see this hadith to be authentic, they will say this is makro. Why? Because there's an external evidence that shows it's not, it's not haram because the Prophet ﷺ fasted past the halfway mark. So the way that scholars reconciled is that if you were fasting from the beginning of Sha'ban, then after the halfway mark, it's not an issue. But if you were to fast after the halfway mark, it's disliked. Even then, there's a discussion amongst the scholars on the authenticity of the hadith. You've got some that authenticated it, for example, Imam al tahawi Imam Al-Nasai, Imam uh, Ibn Majah, rahimahumullahu ta'ala. But then you've got scholars who weakened it from the top of them is Imam Ahmad, rahimahumullah. He said the hadith is Munkar, Yahya ibn Ma'in, rahimahumullahu ta'ala, also weakened it. So there's a discussion amongst the scholars. Um, if you see the hadith to be authentic, then inshallah ta'ala, there's no issue um, with a person uh, accepting that. But it's makruh. Inshallah, according to the strongest view mentioned by the scholars, um, 
Wallahu a'la wa alam. Um, or if you don't see the hadith to be authentic, then it's not an issue. Just make sure you don't fast the day or two before Ramadan, unless you're from the category of people that was already mentioned. Does that make sense? Now, I wanted to, inshallah ta'ala, give you guys a little bit of homework. Okay? I want to give you guys a bit of homework. I'm going to try and mention these benefits as much as possible. I'm going to give you guys a little bit of homework. And if you get the answer right, I might even give you a little prize. You can mention the answer in the question. So we know that the month of Sha'ban is the one in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would fast the most. Does that make sense? And this is kind of like a, a warm-up to Ramadan. You know, the fasting in Sha'ban, Shaykh Ibn Uthaymin said, it's kind of like how the Sunnah prayer is before Fajr. You know, the Sunnah prayer before Fajr is like a warm-up. It prepares you, gets you ready for the actual Fajr. It's like, you know, when you do a big thing, you, you warm up for it, you prepare for it. So it's the preparation for the Salah. Again, the, the, the full Sunnah before Dhar is like the warm-up for the Salah. Um, so the fasting in Sha'ban is like that. And it's got huge, uh, huge, huge, huge um, weight. Um, so the Prophet Ali Sassam would fast in this month more than any other month. But there's a question I want to put to you now, which is that there is another hadith by Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And this hadith is in the Sahih of Imam Muslim, in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, the afdal al-siyami ba'da Ramadan, shahrullah al-muharram. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that the best fasting after Ramadan the best month to fast in after Ramadan is Muharram. And he called it the month of Allah, Shahrullah, the month of Allah, Muharram. So this is a hadith, authentic. And it's true, the best month to fast in after Ramadan is Muharram. Did you know that? If you didn't, comment below. <laughs> now, here's the question I want to ask you. If that month is the best month to fast in after Ramadan, why is it that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would fast in Sha'ban more than Muharram? Why isn't that Muharram is the one we fast the most? Why is it not the case? Research the answer, find it out inshallah ta'ala, comment it below. Maybe there'll be a prize, I can't guarantee it. Uh, till then, see you. Until the next benefit. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Finally, Taha, we're going to be able to produce videos so fast on this new powerful Mac, inshallah ta'ala. Bro, get off the Mac. Oh, my bad, bro. You're bad for real. Yeah, I didn't see you there, man. What do you mean you didn't see me? I'm right here. No, obviously, how am I supposed to see you, bro? At the time we're recording this video, you've not been edited in yet. Say wallahi. Yeah, you've been edited. No way. Yeah, post-production, my dude. That's dream. mad. Whole time, K-Visuals, obviously, as you can Mashallah. see. More money came in, we were able to hire a better visual team. That's why we can do stuff like this. But anyway, bro, listen, I need to talk to the people, okay? Bro, do your thing. I'm, I'm just going to sit here and listen, inshallah. In the first place. So now, I can, brothers and sisters, as you guys saw, literally, about just over 25 hours ago, we put out a video saying we need to raise money for new media equipment so we could spread la ilaha illallah across the world wide web. And Alhamdulillah Rabbil I mean, you guys, almost with Allah's permission, have managed to reach the target, which means we're going to be closing that fundraiser very shortly because we're just a few thousand away from our ultimate goal. Now, here's the thing. Do you know what that means for you? That means you miss out on an opportunity to get mad reward. Because as I showed you in the last video from that one camera, we managed to reach 20 million people. That means there's a potential of 20 million rewards just of YouTube. Imagine all the multiple different cameras, the different computers and the things that, that, we, that we purchase from these donations and then all the data that we spread across the internet, the kind of reward you'll get, you see. Now when that fundraiser closes, your opportunity is gone and I'd advise you, please don't miss out on that. Like there was a companion at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet told the, the Sahaba that there's going to be 70,000 from his Ummah that are going to go to Jannah without any accountability, which means no questioning. Day judgment, straight to paradise. So one of the companions, his name was Ukasha, he stood up and he said, Ya Rasulullah, he said, make dua to Allah that I'm from those 70,000. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him, and Taminhum. He said, you're from them. It's done. It's done. Another companion heard it. He was like, oh, you just have to do that? He said, ask the Prophet. So he got up and he said, Ya Rasulullah, he said, make dua to Allah to make me from them as well. And the Prophet said to him, Sabaqa ka biha Ukasha. He said, Ukasha beat me to it. That was a... Limited offer. <laughs> that was that was you. You missed the window of opportunity. 
So what that shows you is that don't let someone beat you to the punch. Don't let someone beat you with the opportunity to get that kind of reward. I mean, think about it, man, we've got sins. But have an opportunity to buy a piece of equipment, which there's going to be multiple rewards that are going to come from it. Rewards in the hundreds and thousands, rewards in the millions potentially, inshallah ta'ala. That's not the kind of good deed that you want to pass up. So anyway, inshallah ta'ala, with that said, I'm going to leave you guys before this guy gets upset. Open the box. Yeah, bro, we're going to unbox you soon as the video Quickly, stops, man. man. Just be patient, bro. Hastiness from Shaitan. Anyway, patient, listen, bro. Before, look at me gets upset after bounce. But the link is below if you don't want to donate, inshallah ta'ala, so we can spread this da'wah. Listen, inshallah, we're going to spread this da'wah everywhere, inshallah ta'ala. Everywhere that Allah allows us to be. Of course, we can't do it each and every single place. Before we get a little refutation, oh my God, he said everywhere. Jokers. Salam alaikum.